Welcome back guys to Phoenix Wright Jewel Destinies where Phoenix starting off his first trial in eight years He had a little bit of nerves as he countered to Plume's testimony talking about how the actual victim here died with a couple of mistakes made he's worked out his nerves and jitters and hopes to not make a mistake from here on out as we continue on learning more about the fact that the normal de plume could not see the corpse or at least who was being attacked by a certain whale yes yes I suppose I am however immediately after the headbutting the victim came floating up he came up from behind the skull shaped rock and his body was all limp what else could I think except that the killer whale was headbutting the victim Objection! But if you didn't actually see the moment of the attack itself, then it's pure conjecture. Objection. <sighs> Must I do everything around here? How dare you speak so rudely to me? There's no need for hysterics. Clear your mind and recall how you reached your conclusion. Though you can see what the orc was attacking, you didn't need to, did you? Because you knew she was behaving exactly as she had only one year prior. Oh, one year ago? That's right, yes, that's it. That's how I knew the killer whale was headbutting the victim. I'm sorry, but could someone explain exactly what happened a year ago? If you must know, a very similar incident occurred only last year in which the defendant murdered her trainer. Oh, what? The orca murdered her trainer, you say? What? Is this really true? This is not looking good for us. How did you not get put down then? It's all in this book. That book? The Killer Killer Whale. That's Mr. Plume's latest work. I was just thinking of picking that up. So the Killer Killer Whale has been added to the court record. A book made just about this? This is bad. Okay, so last year the defendant killed her trainer in the middle of a show. The orca headbutted and bit the victim. The same thing she's accused of in this case. That orca killed two people? That thing is a menace! Guilty, guilty, I say! I didn't want to go to the beach again! No, now everyone's even more convinced that Orla did it. We were doing so well, but now. Now everyone in the room has a bad impression of Orla. I don't want to think she did it, but it's hard to keep on believing in somebody who can't even tell me her side. Phoenix, Athena, you gotta believe in Orla. There's no way she killed anybody. You gotta save her. Please, I'm begging you. Sasha, what am I doing down in my client like this? This is the time to be strong. I believe in Orla, and I'm ready to fight for our clients. I'll take everybody in this courtroom on if I have to. Don't you worry, Sasha. We won't give up on Orla. We'll defend her to the very end. Thank you. Thank you, both of you. We are Orla's lawyers. Who else but us can save her? We can't give up on her now. Hmm. For an instant there, you were afraid of the orca. Weren't you right, Dono? When you saw the photograph of the victim from a year ago, you turned paler than me. It's all right through me. It's obvious you have neither the guts nor the determination to defend the Orca. It's true that Orla can't speak, and I don't know her thoughts. But there's a certain someone who believes in Orla with all her heart. I respect the trust she has in Orla, so I'm willing to believe in Orla too. Hmm. What do you know about Orcas? Nothing. That's what. So allow me to fill you in. Do you have any idea why orcas are also called killer whales? Because they are cunning and merciless predators that hunt and kill even true whales. So, killer whales really are killers? What terrifying creatures indeed. I can't bear to hear any more such rubbish as trusting a killer. Can you, your boldness? No matter what you say, I will continue to believe. I didn't give up that easily, you know. Dullard, you don't know when to give up, do you? Very well, I shall give you a chance to prove just how determined you are. 
Witness, spare no quarter and lay the full truth on them. Oh, oh, oh. but of course, that is what I do after all. Prosecutor Blackwill, what will you have the witness testify about? I shall have her testify about what she saw and what she heard. What she heard? Very well, Mr. Plume, please tell the court what you saw and what you heard. Well, what you saw and what I heard. What I saw and what I heard. The killer whale's behavior was exactly the same as a year ago. As I approached the pool, the killer whale suddenly started singing. I was calm when I saw it start to headbutt. But when the pirate had victim came floating up, I let out a scream. Hmm. So the orca displayed the same behavior as during the incident a year ago. That's right. Those weren't just simple cries. It was singing. As I approached the pool, the killer whale suddenly started singing. He kept headbutting while it sang the swashbuckler spectacular song. That's right. It was singing the same song it sang in the aquarium stage show back then. It was singing while it was headbutting. Oh, it was perfectly horrible. Huh. I don't see a single obvious inconsistency in this testimony. But more to the point here is it sounds like someone's being prompted to do a trick. It's clear I won't be able to take apart a statement with evidence alone. So right, now would be a good time for me to put my skills to work. It's time to show what analytical psychology can really do. You seem pretty confident. Let me guess. You noticed the contradiction between the testimony and her emotions? You bet I did. And once we expose it, we just might be able to crack her. No scratch that. Make it. We'll definitely be able to. And let's give your knowledge of analytical psychology a try. You got it, boss? A complete analysis of Mr. Plume's heart. Come right up. Why do you use this on every testimony, then? A noise rating of 100, eh? So, the killer whale's behavior was exactly the same as a year ago. So, no nothing here at all. As I approached the pool... The killer whale suddenly started singing. So, okay, we went from nothing and then we went to the second part of the statement. Well, she was just surprised to start singing. I was calm when I saw it start to headbutt. Okay, we got sadness and surprise. Why are you sad? Actually, that's contradictory already, isn't it? But when the pirate hat and victim came floating up, I let out a scream in which you were less sad. I mean, okay, look, if I was to be that sadness, like, the logic between me is that you'd be sad because the killer whale would be hurting itself by the look of it? I mean, you, I guess you could explain the sadness as being also about someone dying. That said, she was also less surprised when a body came around. Hmm. Was well, either sadness or surprise. Do you see any emotions that seem odd or out of place? Pay attention to not only which emotions you see, but how strong they are too. An emotion might suddenly get stronger, for example, or you might see it grow weaker. Okay, let me do a testimony again. Well, it's on those last two statements, so nothing's here. I mean, you're surprised that it's singing. If you were calm when you sort of start to headbutt, why were you super sad all of a sudden? That is like ultimate sad emotion. I mean, why would it do that after be seeing? Start hitting this thing. Wait, it headbutting the thing is releasing the body, isn't it? Is the body hidden from view until our whale defendant? It's caused to do a trick that then somehow does that? I don't know. Right. I think it's going to be... Well, it's either sadness or surprise. The surprise level doesn't change between these two. The sadness level is overwhelming. Which just makes me think that... I know I've overanalyzed this, but... Just upset about the whale being hurt. That 
would be what I get from that. Got it. Mr. Plume, Orla really frightened you of a headbutting, didn't she? To be absurd, I certainly was not frightened by the likes of any killer whale. It must have been something else to scare her then, boss. However, I do remember being very afraid for some reason while it was doing that. It sounds like maybe you saw something we haven't discussed yet. Take your time and try to remember what it was. What did you see? This is practically turning into a counselling session. I saw something. Or, or I saw something? Oh! Ah! I, I remember now! Right, so noise levels dropped to 50%. Okay, good. Now if you could please tell the court what you saw. I saw... I saw... I saw... Bright red blood! The killer whale's ramming caused the victim to bleed. There was a great cloud of blood, but were you sad? Because again, you thought the animal was getting hurt? Because things were out of view. What? Yes, that's it. That's why I was so sure. That's when I knew that killer whale had killed a person for a second time. You saw it? No, you saw it this time. Well, that was a very compelling statement indeed. And looking at this again, there does appear to be something that could be a cloud of blood. So her terror was a reaction to blood, was it? That would certainly explain what happened yesterday. Please take a look at this bloodstained coin. Ah! Cease and desist at once! What kind of man shows a lady blood? Uh, she'll have to get so worked up. I was badly injured during an interview once. Ever since then, I've been terrified of blood. The very sight of it dreadfully upsets my delicate sensibilities. This is a bad turn. If Mr. Plume saw blood, then does that mean Orla really did attack the victim? It would appear that Orcas are even more vicious than I am. So, how does it feel to be thoroughly rammed by your own cross-examination? Right, dunno. What do we do now, boss? Ah, that testimony was not at all what I expected to hear. Wait a minute. There's still some discord left in Mr. Plume's heart. What? You mean there's more? Yes, but there's no telling what it is. It could be something even more damaging. Ah, uh, is there even anything left of our case of damage? Well, whatever it is, we have to face it head on. Athena, you believe in all the right? If so, there's no reason for us to shy away from the truth. Yeah, you're right. I know we can handle the truth, whatever it is. So let's delve a little deeper. You've got it, boss. Right, so now what are we looking for? So we've got nothing on the original thing. The Killer's World Baby was exactly the same as a year ago. So it's again, as she approaches. We've eliminated the sadness from this statement. The Killer World suddenly starts singing, which was surprising. The sadness is on this statement. Which has now been updated. Never mind. So we know why she's sad now. None of the emotions have fluctuated. And after it started headbutting, I saw the awful blood was terrified. Right. So nothing's changed on the emotions here. The info's updated here too. When the pirate hand and victim came floating up, I let out a scream. So I guess now the erroneousness of it all is why does her sadness level go down? So that's the same surprise level. I think that was roughly the same sadness level. I'm not sure. But wouldn't your sadness ramp up after you notice someone had been murdered? Why would your sadness decrease? I guess that's probably it. it. Huh. My fear appears to lessen near this statement. Mr. Plume, weren't you afraid when you saw the victim with blood coming out of him? My, that's a very good question. I was shaken after witnessing a murder, yes, but then the blood seemed to disappear. Uh, disappear? And um, why do you suppose that was? Simple. It was because of the pirate hat. After the killer whale put the hat on, the cloud of blood disappeared. Now, why would that be? Objection! And how exactly does that work? How should I know? I just tell you what I remember, blue boy. Wait a minute. 
From whom was this blood that Mr. Plume saw actually coming from? Ah. It's gotta be Orla, hasn't it? Well, did the blood then act as like a band-aid? Yeah, it's gotta be Orla, because like, honestly, you'd think that Orla was hurting herself. Or Aura, even. Uh. Well, that said as well, I guess it would be Aura or the victim, so let's hope for not a fail. But to be honest, I think it's more about caring about Aura. I don't know. I say it's coming from Aura. Take that! After you headbutt yourself on a rock a bit, consider this. Maybe the one who was bleeding wasn't the victim. So the hat staunched the blood because it was coming from Aura. I beg your pardon? What kind of ridiculous nonsense is that? There was no one else in that pool besides the victim? Oh, I wouldn't say there was no one else. It is an orca pool after all. What? Then where's this alleged injury on the defendant? I'm not sure, but if simply wearing the pirate hat made the blood disappear... Then the blood must have been coming from somewhere on Orla's head. What? What? The orca's head. What are you prattling on about now? Please think about it again, Mr. Plume. Think back to what you really saw. Uh... I... that is... The, the one who was bleeding was not the victim, but the killer whale. Uh... I remember now. There wasn't any blood coming from the victim after all. Okay, so what? Was this... yeah... Silly. Well, that's the noise level cut out. We did it! Analytical psychology got us what we needed from her! That was a huge help, Athena. It was also pretty dicey for a while, though. Well, this is a surprise! The blood the witness saw was the defendants, not the victims. That is correct. And since there was no blood coming from the victim, there's only one thing we can conclude. That what Mr. Plume witnessed was not the moment of the murder as she claims. Objection! I thought you were unarmed, but it turns out you were concealing a sword all along. And nevertheless, it is far too dull to cut to the bone. Meaning? I grant that what the witness saw was not the victim's blood, but it proves nothing. After all, being rammed doesn't always result in a wound that bleeds, does it? A death from maternal hemorrhaging is also a possibility. <laughs> he has a point there. If you wish to challenge me to a duel, you'll need a sharper blade than that, or I don't know. I demand evidence that proves the witness did not see the moment of the murder. Ah, there must be something. Think, Phoenix. If I'm correct, then the victim's death occurred... Well, it would be before the plume even saw it. it would, the body would be already in the tank, and the blood would have stopped pumping for quite some time. If the victim was already dead when Orla started her headbutting, then that would mean he died sometime before Mr. Plume was watching her. The events Mr. Plume witnessed took place at around 10, 10 a.m. I must have something that can tell us about what happened before 10, 10 a.m. Well, it must be a security footage again, really. Because that screwed me over once already. It's been updated, and we know that it starts at Aquarium's 10 a.m. opening time, so... I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But to be honest, security sh at least will tell us the 10 minutes beforehand, right? Take that! so that's the thing we have monitoring. We've only seen the footage from 10.09 to 10.10. Why haven't we watched more? Which means there's still footage going further back that we need to check. Why haven't they done that? Your Honor, I request that all of the security footage be played for the court. All of the footage? Mr. Plume witnessed the cloud of blood at around 10, 10 a.m. But I believe the victim was already dead by that time. So your assertion is that the murder took place before Mr. Plume arrived? Exactly. The security camera footage starts at 10 a.m. when the security... 
one when the aquarium opened. I'm still confused with this. Why would you have a security camera that's not going all night? And I believe there is vital evidence in the 10 minutes before. Hmm. You are quite the gambling man, Mr. I don't know. Are you honestly willing to risk everything on those mere 10 minutes? I bet on slimmer chances before, but when he puts it that way... Hold it! My boss is no coward, Prosecutor Blackwell, so I suggest you get ready to eat humble pie! Uh-oh, I can't back down now! Well, if the defense is that confident in its importance... Prosecutor Blackwell, the security footage. Fulbright. Roger! I have the rest of the security footage right here! Very well. Please play it for the court. Please, please have something for me. This is what it looked like at 10, 10 a.m. The witness can be seen here. All right, I'll just back the footage up to the beginning now. We're seeing minute steals, are we? Literally nothing going on. Hmm, it appears Mr. Plume hasn't arrived yet at this point. Now see if I can find something from before this point in time. No. It just swam round. That's literally what everyone's thing is like, okay, there was nothing at all. Is that it? Yup, that's all the footage there is. Well, Mr. Wright, do you see what you were looking for? What? Oh, we got nothing. Hmm. Well, Wright, don't know. Those were the ten minutes you placed your bet on. Did you see anything of significance? Did I see anything important? I better think about this carefully. In the footage we see... Okay. What I have to say here is technically this is a trick question because exactly seeing nothing happen is incredibly important. Because you didn't see the body fall in or anything like that so you know the body's been in there for a long period of time. If it started there, if you didn't see it come in from the top and then, or dragged in or anything like that, then we're not talking anything, you know? Enough, the well didn't do it, the body was already there and we need to go back further so uh, events don't come out wells, which is really important. But I'm guessing what it's getting at from the previous text is technically we saw nothing important. So we should choose the option nothing important, even though that is really important. Because that makes no sense. Yeah? Trick question? We can see nothing of importance in that footage. Hmm. Just as I force. Ha ha ha! You're right about that! That section was completely meaningless! It doesn't show a thing! That's why I didn't submit it as evidence! Objection! And that's the good thing. Nope. It's just the opposite. Ha! Huh? What do you mean by that? In this 10 minutes of footage, something important that should be there, isn't there. Detective Fulbright, this footage should have been submitted as evidence. What? Are you questioning the way I carry out my duty to justice? Mr. Wright, explain yourself please. What is this important thing that you say should be in the footage but isn't? Uh... But yeah, there we go. Maybe? It's, it's just, can, I, well, I can't present a profile instead, so that's what I do instead, really. It's got a, it's a person, it's just the victim falling into the pool. Take that! The important thing we should see in the footage is the victim himself, Jack Shipley. I don't know about you, but I didn't see him get in the pool in that footage. Ah! Ah! That's right! If the victim is not shown entering the pool in this footage, it means that he must have been there by the Skull Rock during those 10 minutes. But no human being can hold their breath underwater for that long. 
Wait a minute. Are you saying? When the security camera started up at 10 a.m., the victim was already dead. What? Order! Order in the court! If that's the case, then when was the victim murdered? I don't know, Your Honor, but we now know it had to have been sometime before 10 a.m. Therefore, this footage can no longer be called decisive evidence against my clients. Hmm. There was no one else who could have killed the victim. No one else we've investigated. Not necessarily. Defense believes that the true culprit may have been human. And we have evidence to back up our theory as well. Do you now? I would be very interested in seeing this evidence. A defense is trump card. A thing we found during our investigation yesterday. I wouldn't go so far as to call it decisive, but now's the time to play it. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please submit your evidence. What evidence shows that the crime may have been committed by a human? Well, it's something like this shape, but it's very much the bloodstained coin. Take that! What's this? A coin? Yes, a fake coin used in the Aquarius Pirate Show. We found it beside the pool. This coin is quite possibly the real murder weapon. This tiny little coin is the murder weapon. Mr. Wright, if this is another one of your bluffs. <laughs> As they say, the board of the presentation are less confident than the solicitor. This is no bluff, and this isn't the only coin. There are 300 of these coins altogether, weighing a total of about seven pounds. This one just happens to have blood on it. Did you have the blood analyzed to see whose it is? Not yet. But there were coins scattered all around the body, and the victim had a head wound. Taking these things into account, I believe it has to be the victim's blood. So to put it together, we have about seven pounds of coins by the side of the pool. One of them with a blood stain on it. I think the answer is pretty clear here. Your Honor, the defense proposes that the victim was killed beside the pool. The side of the pool? Well, if the murder took place there, it would be difficult to say the orca did it. I realize you were trying to defend your client, but that theory is preposterous. How could 300 coins possibly be made to hit someone all at once? It'd be pretty easy if they were in a bag or something of that nature. And so where is this bag the coins were in? Unfortunately, Your Honor, we recovered nothing of the sort from the scene. It's possible the culprit took it with them. They took it? The true culprit used the coins as a blunt instrument to commit murder. They then threw the body into the pool before the security cameras started up. And then they left, taking the bag the coins were in with them. They got rid of the evidence that points to a human culprit to pin the blame on Orla. That was brilliant, Mr. Wright! We found a way to introduce the possibility of a human perpetrator. Yeah, somehow. Let's hope my luck holds out. Hmm. I wonder why Prosecutor Blackwell hasn't said anything. The possibility of a perpetrator other than the defendant has now been suggested. But if we hold this possibility to be true, then what did Mr. Plume witness? Th that's right. I saw the killer well attack the victim, just like it did a year ago, singing a song. Huh. I guess there still is that. Even with somebody else as the culprit, all this behavior still seems pretty bizarre. I wonder why she did what she was doing, the same thing she did a year ago. But are they really that bizarre? What do you mean? To explain the inexplicable, all we have to do is turn our thinking around. Turn our thinking around, huh? Sounds good to me. Right, time to give the old turn my thinking around method a try. Instead of trying to figure out why Orla did the same thing she did a year ago, I should consider the results that were produced by her behavior this time round. Orla sang a song, did some headbutts, and bit the victim. If the real culprit wanted to shift the suspicion onto Orla, then they would have needed to give people a reason to think Orla did it in the first place. Mr. Wright, as her lawyer, how do you explain your client's actions? I believe we should think of it in this way, Your Honor. What kind of effect did Orla's actions have on the case? Ah, uh, very well. Then why don't you explain it for the court? How did the defendant's actions affect the case? Well, 
the obvious thing here is that they created a witness. So they didn't kill the victim. They got rid of evidence. No, definitely created a witness. And that witness, Norma de Plume. And technically a security camera too. Either way you spin it, it works out. However, we haven't got to the bottom of why Norma's even being able to get into the aquarium. It seems like she's got a link on the inside. I wanted her in a very specific position. Some would say, oh, delving deeper, delving deeper with the realms of thought that probably won't prove to be true. We'll continue on with Phoenix Wright Dual Destinies next time. See you then. Bye-bye.